Uh, quick, we need to see how many chairs we have left. So everyone, please grab a seat. Uh, we need to, so we can make sure we can let as many people as possible in. That would be awesome. And you can re the music <laughs> for like 30 seconds. I'm glad someone thought that was funny. Uh, we had some people up here too. We were, uh, we were just warming up. We were beatboxing in the mic. People were like, we can't hear you. And it's like, it was, it was in our inner monitors. So that's how we roll. of this semester, this school year. It's so good to see you. Is, is this anyone's first FOP out there? Welcome to the Festival of Praise. We're so happy to be uh, welcoming so many new students on campus. Uh, and if this is uh, the, the cap to your freshman retreat, welcome back. If you're just coming for the first time and haven't been to an event with everyone together uh, in, in a long time since uh, your extended spring break ended, welcome back. We're so happy to see you. You guys ready to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, tonight? You guys can stand up. Fighting our battles and 
before you tonight. We praise your holy name, Jesus. We praise you. Thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you so much for the gift of this field house, a place large enough so that we can gather here in your name and praise you. We praise you, Jesus. Lord, we acknowledge you as our only Savior. Tonight, we wish to worship you. We wish to worship you as our God. Lord, you are our only safety net. We praise you, Lord. We step out of the boat. We praise you, Jesus. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness. Kindness of a Savior, the hope, the hope of nations. Sing, Savior, He can move the mountains. Savior, He can move the mountains. 
My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. find me, all my fears and failures, please fill my life again, I give my life to follow, everything, everything I believe in, surrender, now this moment, this night of worship, and we, we wish, like that song says, just to surrender. Now I surrender, Lord. We put aside our agendas. Anything that we came in here that might distract us from knowing that you are truly present here in the Eucharist and that you love us and you are our God. You are our Savior. You are our King. You are what our heart longs for. But we just surrender that all down to you. Nothing is impossible for you, Jesus.
Lord, we give you this moment. I ask you to please send your spirit down on everyone here in this room as we praise you, as we encounter you, Lord. Send your peace. You hold my every moment. You calm my raging sea. You walk with me through fire. You heal all my disease. I trust.
praise you, Lord. Amen. 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 Give it up for Jesus. Woo! Yeah. Welcome to the August Pop. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, it is so good to see you back. My name is Lauren, and I am a grad student here, and I'm going to be the MC for tonight. Yes, yes. I love you all. Um, I'm so glad you guys are here. Turn to your neighbor and say, hey, I'm glad you're here. Turn to your other neighbor and say, hey, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the Lord has something special for you guys tonight, and I am so excited to be here um, and encounter him together. Amen? Amen. Amen. So tonight, we are going to hear a quick little word from a friend of the universities. His name is Brian. Say, hey, Brian. Hey. He's not coming up yet. Brian is super awesome. So I was chatting with Brian and he is like kind of shy about this fun fact, but who watched Sweet Life of Zack and Cody growing up? Yeah, that's right, that's right. So Brian was actually a stunt double for Mosby. <laughs> yeah! You guys will have to ask him if that's true or not, but Brian is a father of three kids and he's a husband and he is so pumped to share with you guys tonight. So give it up for Brian. Nah. <laughs> so um, I am. I was talking to Bob over there, and, and when you all were doing the work, well, when we were all doing the worship, I was like, like, kind of going crazy because I haven't worshipped in like eight months, and I was watching you all lose it, and, and then sister over there hit some notes that I didn't know it was gonna come, and I and, and I was like, oh my, God. I was like. I was like, oh my gosh, right? And I was telling Bob, Bob was over there. He was like, Brian, are you pumped to go? I was like, Bob, if you let me go now, it'll be amazing. But every second that you wait, it gets less and less good. You know, I was just so pumped. Um, part of it's because, well, I'm pumped, but I'm sobered at the same time. Pumped and I'm sobered at the same time. And that's unique for me because usually when we're doing worship, I'll get into that worship trance. Ha eyes half open, arms out, you know, just in that worship trance, the, the smoke is messing with me. But, but today, you know, I'm more sober. And, and, and that's weird because usually when it comes to giving a talk, I can give a talk through a storm, right? It could be going crazy, and I've learned how to, how to focus in. But there's an urgency that's on my heart based off of what's going on in the world right now. And it sobered me in, in a way that I haven't experienced in a long time to the point where I was bright-eyed and, and I was really focused in. And there's a couple of things. I was focused in, and I don't know if you did this on purpose, but it, it was phenomenal anyway. Um, I was listening to 
Like, you know how we can worship and you, we can get, just get lost in the song but not think about the words that we're saying? You know, you know, you know, I believe. And, and, and I'm not a worship. You can tell that right now. So we just get lost in the beat and lost in the trance and we forget the words that we're saying. But the songs that the, the worship uh, the, the worship band picked, they were so applicable to what's going on in our world right now. You know, I believe that you're my portion. I believe that you are all that I need. I mean, I mean, we sing those songs, but I don't know if we take time to internalize them because if we did, then that just takes our worship to another level because we know exactly what we're saying and we're putting our heart into those words that we're saying because we know what those words are focused on. And I was just listening to it and, and, I, and I was thinking that I'm in the right place. Like, and it's not a whoop thing, but I appreciate it. But you guys in this room, I don't know if you realize it. Maybe someone has told you this, you know, this year, but you guys were made for this moment. You, and, and, and I don't say that lightly, but I honestly believe it. If this was a, last year, it would be another message. Next year, it'll probably be a, a totally different message. But for this moment in time, you guys are made for this moment. The world needs you now. I, I talked to some of the freshmen earlier and some of the juniors and the seniors. I'll tell you the same thing. Some of you came here with a plan. But somewhere along the line, the world shifted. And now your plan has turned into a mission. You came here searching for a career. Now you got a mission. The world needs you. And I'm confident that you guys were made for now. For times like today, for truth to be heard, for courage to be displayed, this is your time. People are looking for you. When, now, now, all of us know what's been going on the last couple of months, and it struck us in, in, in different ways. With me, there was fear and there was nervousness. I remember when, when um, this first happened and we were quarantined, people started asking me, Brian, what is the Lord doing with this quarantine? What's, where's Jesus in this quarantine? Is this of God? And I'll be honest, I had no clue. But to a point, it really didn't matter. Romans 8, was it Romans 8, 28? Romans 8, 28, all things work for good for those who love God who are according to, according to his purposes. So if it's the Lord testing us or the devil tempting us, it really doesn't matter because the Lord wins in the end. So I don't know what, what the COVID was all about. And then in the midst of the COVID, we started having the racial tensions come to the surface. And I remember someone called me up. I don't know how they got my number, but they called me up and they wanted to do an interview with me. And they asked me, uh, Brian, what do you think of all the racial tension? Are you all still with me? I just want, yeah, okay. I, don't, I don't mean to get too heavy, but I understand the urgency of the situation. And I understand that you guys matter. So I'm not gonna really play games. Don't tell me that. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. <laughs> so. Someone called me up and, and, and they said, Brian, um, what do you think about the George Floyd thing, that whole situation? And I told them, I was honest, I, I told them that uh, it, it was terrible. Well, it was the first time in a long time where everyone collectively said that something was bad. And I could recognize that this was, this should not have happened. You know, regardless of the, of the past situation, it was a bad thing that happened. And she was, and I was telling this, uh, the reporter this, and then I added, but I'm kind of used to it. It really, you know, I can see that it, that it matters, but I'm kind of desensitized to it right now. Because it's happened before, right? We've seen stuff like this happen before. We've seen people die, people get hurt. We, and, and for me, you know, I was always hurt because you know, sometimes I'm afraid that I may get profiled. I, they, they're not going to know that I teach theology, that I have a wife and three kids. They, people may judge me. You know, they may not know. You know, I went to Franciscan for a little bit. And my, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'll reminisce for a second. I was coming up here and I was remembering I had a class with, with, with Dr. Hahn, principal of PBS, one principal of biblical studies. Now, that may be old school, but I had that class. And I remember Scott Hahn gave me back my paper and said, 
this is a really good paper. And I was like, it, it, I was going, but, but, but people may not, like people, when they see me, they may not know that. So when that happened, you know, I, I told them that I was kind of, I was hurt, but I was desensitized to what was going on because it always happens. You know, in our, in our world right now, we're fed a consistent diet of death, right? You know, when you turn on the media, you've, you've, you're, you're fed a con, consistent diet of destruction, of, of pushing God out of, of, of the of public discussion, of, of godlessness, of, of, of a person's worth being based off of what they can do, not in inherent value because they're made in the image and likeness of God. We're not taught that. We're taught death and destruction. On a consistent basis, whether it's in television, movies, or, or radio, we hear that all the time. So when you see someone being killed, that's what happens when you're fed that consistent diet of death. That's the result of, of uh, emotion-based morality. When I don't look at the humanity of a person, when I don't see the godliness inside of you, when I don't see you as a daughter of God, but I see you as, you know, an object. That's kind of what happens, amen? That, you know, and that's what secular culture feeds us, so when you feed me this, I'm, this is the result of that. But something was different this time. This time, we couldn't run away from it. You know, back in the past, we can turn on a football game and escape the pain, right? Back in the past, we could go to a, go to a class and, and we knew we had to get an A on this test so we could escape the pain. Back in the day, we had to make money, but there was no money to be made, so we couldn't escape it. So for the first time in a long time, it was like secular culture had a mirror put right in front of it that was telling them, this is what you're feeding people and this is what you get. And that mirror was put right in front of everybody. And for some strange reason, and we understand it, for some strange reason, they didn't like what they saw. We knew it was coming, but they didn't like what they saw. And what happened? People went crazy. Because in the absence of leadership, in the absence of truth, people follow emotions. And emotions will make us go crazy at times. When we follow emotions and not objective truth and we don't follow Christ, then division is created. And that's what we saw. People going crazy, people fighting against one another, people, you know, losing their sanity, people lashing out at other people, people judging. We saw division, and the devil was dancing in the middle of that division because the devil is a divider. And we saw that all of that happening in the culture because there was no, no truth, no one to lead people to where they needed to go. And there was a discouragement. I'll be honest, and I told her that, we ended the interview, I told her that, but I keep reflecting on it. There's a discouragement, there's a frustration, especially when you're a person of God, right? Especially when you're a person that knows the right direction to go down. There's a frustration when you see people sprinting down the wrong path. But even in the midst of that frustration, there was hope. You got to be able to see it. There was hope. There is hope. This, and, and, and I think this is, is, is maybe why the Lord called me here. Maybe this is why the Lord called you back. We, for the first time in a long time, we got an opportunity. This time right now, is a time when the church has an opportunity to be what it is. This time right now, with all the destruction going on, with all the division going on, with the foundations rocked, life, livelihood, with all of that in question, the church has the ability to step into those cracks and be what it is. We get a chance to be the church. People right now, when you listen to what they want, they want peace, they want love, they want guidance, they want truth, they want understanding. One, holy, Catholic, apostolic. We got that. I'll say this. And this is what gives me hope. We are what the culture is looking for. They just don't know it. They just don't know it. But that's what we're called to, bring hope to a hopeless generation. There's this, script, there's this verse in the Bible, 2 Chronicles 
7. Well, 2 Chronicles 7, let me make sure I get it right. Because I know as soon as I make a mistake, someone in here is going to be like, that's not right. All right, just take this for what it is. I know this is, you know, I have to preface this because I'm at Franciscan. This is, I know it's about Solomon dedicating the temple. I know that, but it applies to us, so just give me a moment, all right? All right. Second, I'll start with, uh, no, four, 13. When I shut up the heavens so there is no rain, Or command the locust to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. This is the key. This is, I mean, when I was praying this, the Lord, like, kind of hit me upside the head. He said, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven And will forgive their sin and heal their land. I think that the Lord is speaking to us. The Lord is giving us an opportunity to refocus. Remember the songs that we sang? The Lord is giving us the opportunity to internalize those lyrics. And sing them with our heart from integrity. And refocus our view back on him. I'll be honest, in in this quarantine... I've been really able to to focus on my relationship with God, and I've seen some holes. But God gives us the opportunity to refocus and lead other people to where they need to be. Now, this is where you come in. God is calling us to truth and to courage. Truth, because a lot of us live in comfort. We base our lives off of what we used to do or what people used to say or how things used to feel. But comfort and truth, they're not necessarily synonymous. Sometimes when when you're honest with yourself, it can make you uncomfortable. And a lot of times when you're honest with people, it can make them really uncomfortable, especially if they're under the illusion that they're all that in a bag of chips with the dip. But truth, we're called to live in truth. And truth challenges us. Truth challenges other people. Truth challenges lifestyles. But we understand this. I'd rather be popular in front of him than popular in front of them. So we choose truth, right? So we're called to a renewed focus on truth. Living for the Lord. All Uh, that awe of God. And the second thing, has everyone got that? Is everyone with me with that? Amen? The second thing that we're called to is this. And I shared it with the freshmen. But I think it, I think we all need to hear it. When I think about what this world needs, what our culture needs, and I'm not just, I'm not gassing you guys up. I'm being totally 100 with you right now. I think that the roads come through Franciscan University. I, I, and I, now, I'm not, say, I'm not being mean to any other university. I'm not saying that everyone else is garbage and Franciscan is the only right one. You know, some of you are like, yeah, that's what he's saying, but, you know. <laughs> no, I, I'm say, what, what I'm saying is this, that when you look at your history, 60s and the 70s, Father Scanlon, when he, he, he handled the racial tension. We look at the alumni that you have and what they're doing in the church, what they're doing to help the kingdom grow, and people that are into ministry, how they somewhere along the line find their way to this campus. The unity that you all have to come and worship together, the ability for you to come together for this school year. And understand that there's a greater purpose, and I may have to sacrifice certain things, but I'm going to go according to this plan because I understand that at the end of the day, it's not all about me. That spirit that you all have makes me think that when you talk about hope, the roads have to go through Franciscan. That's why I said you guys were made 
for this moment. And don't take that lightly because I would not say that if I didn't mean it. You're made for this time. But there's a dilemma in that also. When you challenge people, they don't like it. When you stand up for something, a lot of people don't like it. And it's so easy to break people down as opposed to build them up or affirm them. But you didn't come here to be affirmed. You come here, you, you all came here to live a life in imitation of Christ. That's why you came here. So you understand what you're going to have to go through in order to get to heaven. People may not like you. People may break you down because, and it's not that they're evil. It's not that they're mean. They just don't get it yet. They just haven't been loved into the kingdom yet. That's your job. But it's going to take on your part courage. Courage. And I told the freshman this, courage is not when someone says that I'm not afraid of anything. If someone says that, they're a lunatic or a liar. It's because there are legit things to be afraid of, right? Courage is like this. There's two paths. One path is easy. And it looks really, really good. But at the end of that path, there's really nothing. There's really no virtue. There's a lot of mediocrity at the end of that path. But there's another path. That path isn't as beautiful. And it goes straight through the things that you're afraid of. But you know that at the end of that path is greatness. What did Pope Benedict say? You weren't created for comfort. You are created for greatness, right? At the end of that path, there's greatness. There's holiness. There's God. At the end of that path, on that path, and behind you, pushing you down that path. Courage is this. I'm going to go down that path. Why? Because that's where the Lord is. Because that's where the Lord is calling me. Because that's where the Lord is guiding me to. I'm going to go down that path because I understand not only is the Lord calling me to that, but there's people that need me. There's people that need to see me go down that path. There's people that will be inspired by the struggles we endure on their behalf. They'll be inspired. They want to see you keep going. And we understand this. That's the model that Christ gave us. And if it's true for the master, it's true for the servant. That's our challenge. That's your call. That's what makes me nervous, but that's what also makes me excited. Because I know that we got a shot. There, we, there, there, I mean, there's people in this room that, that yeah, and you get it. And there's a world for the first time that's open to receive a word of truth. But it starts. This cannot be just another night. It can't be just another night. Every fop after this, it can't be another fop. These are moments when the Lord strengthens us, when the Lord inspires us so that we can inspire and strengthen others. So, and I'm going to bring this down. I'm bringing this down. Yeah. Let me see. So, what I want to challenge you today, what I'm going to pray for, I'll tell you what I'm going to pray for tonight. A renewed awe of God. A renewed awe of God. Because we lose that. I'm going to pray for a renewed commitment to truth. And I'm going to pray that, and it's hard to say this because Holy Spirit saying, speed it up, Greenfield. <laughs> I'm, uh, all right. <laughs> I'm going to pray for this. Um, and it's hard to say this because on the, on the stage you think that I'm, I, I show you what I want you to see, but you don't know my mess. But I'll let you know my mess. I'm going to pray for a renewed that God will once again be my standard. And I'll invite you to pray for that. And when we listen to those songs, let those songs mean something. When we worship, maybe we're okay. But worship for the ones that aren't okay. And I know that we have masks on, but it doesn't change the power of the worship. Give it all for the people around you that need strength and for a world that's clueless. Amen. Let's pray in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of faith. We thank you for the gift of your son. We thank you for bringing us here in this community. We pray um, 
that you would let us feel your presence, that you would be the answer to the questions in our lives, that you would heal our hearts, that you would direct us, and that you would give us strength to respond to your direction. And Lord, we know that all our prayers are imperfect, so we offer them up to the Blessed Virgin Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Give it up for Brian. Yeah. Guys, that was awesome. Amen? Amen. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I hear that message, and he's like, you are called to so much. And I'm like, whoa, I'm just me. Amen? Yeah, we all know who we are, and the Lord has given us great things. But tonight is an opportunity for him to just come and be with you. Like, we're called to these great things, and you're like, courage, like, I, like, courage is hard for me. And the Lord is like, let me come be your comforter. And we're called to, like, fearlessness. And he's like, let me come be your courage. So tonight, we are going to have the opportunity to do a festival of praise. If you haven't done that before, it just means that we're here to joyfully enter into the presence of the Lord and in his presence encounter him and in encountering him be changed by him. Amen? Amen. So tonight, I don't know what it is that you need from him, but he does, and he wants to give it to you. But more than a single thing, he just wants to give himself to you. So in a little bit, um, we are going to have Father Dave come out processing with Jesus in the Eucharist, and he's going to be up here tonight. Um, and I just want to invite you to pray however you feel the most comfortable. But we're also called into, whoo, Holy Spirit, is that you? Um, oh, it's just the band. Uh, <laughs> like, what was that? <laughs> um, tonight, we're going to take a step into the uncomfortable a little bit. And if what, what that looks like for you is like opening your hands on your lap, I want to invite you into that. If it looks like standing up and singing louder than you usually do, I want to invite you into that. Whatever step the Lord is asking you to take, to just say, here I am, Lord. Like, I know this is hard, but I'm going to, like, make a bet with you. I'm going to bet that you're going to show up. And, guys, he always does. He always does. So we are going to enter into a time of prayer, and the band is going to take it from here. Amen. So let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen.
God of love, we welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. Let every heart adore. Let every time of adoration, let's each one of us in our own heart welcome Jesus here. Jesus is present in our midst. The living, almighty, omnipotent God is here present to us. And let us just for a moment open our hearts to him, whatever that looks like for you, whatever that means for you to say, Jesus, come and overpower me, overwhelm me. Jesus, my heart is totally and radically yours tonight. Just invite you guys, just for a moment, just to welcome Jesus into your own heart, into your own life. Jesus, you are so welcome here. You are so good. You are so holy. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Come and fill our hearts. Sometimes it's a little bit awkward to just be able to speak to Jesus, but we want to be able to do that and just ask him to come to us. So whatever you want to say, Jesus, welcome into my heart. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, come and fill me. Whatever it is that you feel, the Lord is asking you just to be able to say that for a moment to him. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you are welcome here. Jesus, you are the center of Franciscan University. You are the center of our community. You are the center of all that we do. Apart from you, nothing makes sense what we do here, Jesus. You are the center of our households. You are the center of our classrooms. You are the center of our athletic life. You are the center of all that takes place here, Lord Jesus. Holy are you. You are in the center of every residence hall, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Praise you. Praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart.
song we were just singing, one of the lines is, and I'm going to have John Paul sing it with us again, but it says, your breath fills our lungs. Jesus, come with your Holy Spirit and breathe on us. Fill our lungs that we would praise you, that we would breathe you in, that we would be overwhelmed by you. Jesus, and let what comes out of our mouth be a song of praise, a song of worship, Come, Lord Jesus, and purify us with your breath. 
just for a moment, be attentive to the Spirit of God present to us and be attentive to your breath. And Lord, fill our lungs with your very presence. We just sing that refrain again. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. this image of the Lord and his spirit resting on us and it's it sounds weird but it's like we're Iron Man like there's just this this fire that the Lord wants to place in each one of our chests that is his living presence as Brian said earlier that the living God dwells in each one of us and he wants to expand that he wants to make it more powerful more anointed more beautiful more whole more holy more transformative Jesus, come upon us, fill us, consume us. Just for a moment, picture the spirit of Jesus just coming and resting on your heart and opening and tearing up. Some of your hearts are broken and some of your hearts are hardened and some of your hearts are hidden. And Jesus wants at this moment to breathe life into your heart, to breathe life into the midst of your fear, to bring peace into the midst of your anxiety, to bring his presence and his joy in the midst of your despair, to bring hope in the midst of your chaos, to come with his love, his mercy, his healing, his restoration. Come upon us, Lord Jesus. Come upon us, Lord Jesus. Breathe life into us, Lord Jesus. Holy are you, Lord God. Jesus. Jesus. And just invite you to ask for that right now. Jesus, come into us, Lord Jesus. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord Jesus. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. You are welcome here, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great. So 
trust. We trust in you. trust in you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Open up our hearts. Oh, we long for craving more we crave for you Lord we crave for you Lord we crave for you Lord we trust Jesus we trust in you As we continue to just spend some time before the Lord and praying and asking his blessing and peace to be with us, I just invite you just to pray in a posture that allows you to pray best. If, if you pray better kneeling down, then kneel down. If, if you're able to pray better and encounter the Lord standing up or seated, just for this time, just allow yourself to be present to the Lord as he wants to be present to you. We're going to spend the next few minutes just praying through some of the things that Brian talked about. And the first is truth. Jesus, we pray for the spirit of truth to come to us as individuals and as a campus. Just in your own mind, in your own heart, ask that the spirit of truth, Jesus reminds us that he is the truth. Scripture tells us that the Spirit reveals what is true. What I pray, Lord, is that you would show us tonight the lies that bind us. That lie that says you're not enough. The lie that says everyone else is better. The lie that says you're flawed. lie that says you're not beautiful, you're not as beautiful, the lie that says you're not a man, the lie that says your past is going to define you, the lie that says you'll never be forgiven, the lie that says a number defines you. Come, Lord Jesus. And just take a moment and ask the Lord, what's that lie that has that you're rooted in? That lie that just continually speaks in the back of your mind. Come, Lord Jesus. Just as I was praying, the image I had was of uh, maybe it looked like a kitchen and 
was a, a fight going on and it was in your family. And I think there are some people here who, who feel because your family wasn't right or your family wasn't even very Catholic or Christian that, that somehow you can't rise above that. And maybe at times you have jealousy or you're embarrassed. The Lord wants you to know that before you were with them, you were with him. And he is your father. And it will be he who will define you. That you are his son, you are his daughter. Come, Lord Jesus. some who are you're just bound by a, an event that's happened in the past or, or like a secret and you spend much of your time being anxious and worried that somebody's going to find the secret or somebody's going to figure out what goes through your mind and if they could really see or if they really knew the Lord just wants to enter into that wants you to be able to surrender that to him and to know that he sees and he knows he accepts he chooses you and he can free you from that Jesus in your name and as your priest I break the spirit of deception I break the spirit of lies Jesus, come with your truth. In your name, Jesus, come with your truth. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. my heart, Lord, I speak what is true. Here's my heart. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart. Brian was sharing, he was talking about how the evil one is dividing, and he's just sitting back and laughing. The evil one wants to divide, to isolate, to kill and destroy. Jesus, come with your gift of your Holy Spirit and allow us to see 
those people that we allow ourselves to be divided from, those people that we're okay with judging, okay with dismissing. Who are those people for us, Lord? Jesus, in your name and as your priest, I come against a spirit of division. Jesus, if you are going to have your way on this campus, we must be one and our eyes must be kept on you. So break down the walls that divide us. The walls of race, of different spiritualities, of family backgrounds, material things. Jesus, we are all part of you and part of your glory. We are all sons and daughters of the Father. So guys, just for a moment, ask God to show you those people that you're divided from, the ones that your heart or your mind can just dismiss, can make fun of. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, with a spirit of unity. Shana, come with your Holy Spirit, Jesus. Brian spoke of desiring all too often a life of comfort. And oftentimes that that is a fear of the cross. As I was walking in to the field house this evening, I was just like, I'm so tired of this pandemic. I'm just tired of it. And the Lord invites me once again to come to his cross and to discover him in the midst. But he is not absent from this. This is not outside of his presence. So what are those things in our life that we choose comfort because we don't want to be inconvenienced, because we don't want to be told what to do, because we want our way and oftentimes because we're not able to accept the will of God or accept the cross that he's given to us. We all have that in our life. So for a moment, what's that thing that the Lord is inviting you to embrace that you would just prefer it not be there? And ask him to show you that he's in the middle of that. But he's not abandoned you. He's not walked away from you. He's not forgotten you. Jesus. Jesus. 
Some of you are thinking about and praying about some relationships. And you just wonder if it could ever be fixed or ever be made right again. Just give them to the Lord. Some of you are experiencing regret of things that you did just two weeks ago. And as Brian said, God works all things for his glory. Jesus, you work all things for your glory. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me die 
I'm going to invite everybody to take a seat for a moment. I invite everybody to take a deep breath. We're just going to take a moment or two and just be still before the Lord. What we're going to do is we're going to try to pray not merely from our mind, but, but from our heart or from our soul. That if we're honest, most of the time when we pray, we just think about God and we think about holy things and we think about things that he's done and that's all good. But sometimes we can get just so much noise in our head, even when we're praying and thinking. So we're just going to take a moment and try to pray from the depths of our soul. That there is within each one of us a soul. It's what makes us human. We are flesh and we are spirit. And every now and then we can pray from there. We can become quiet, really quiet. So just for a moment, place the things that are going through your mind before the Lord. And just pray, Lord, move my prayer from my mind and my head to my heart, to my soul. When we pray from there, we don't usually hear anything. 
but we know. We just know that he is. When we try to pray like this, pretty quickly our mind gets busy again. So as distractions come to your mind, just say, Jesus, I give you this. I give you this situation. I give you this anxiety. I give you this fear. And whatever it looks like for you to just give it to him. And then every now and then, there's nothing else to give him. And we can just be quiet. We can be present. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this evening. Father, I pray your, your spirit to be upon our community here at the university, that we would be rooted in your truth, that we would always choose you over comfort. And the paradox is when we do that, we find your comfort. Allow us to be courageous. And Jesus, that the Franciscan University would be the light that I believe you're calling us to be. Amen? Amen. At this time, why don't we kneel down and we'll go ahead and have our benediction and, and sing Tantum Ergo.
You have given them bread from heaven. Having all sweetness within it. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. You who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And let's chant the divine praises together. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be your holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be your glorious ascension. Mary, Virgin and Mother, blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is 
one wooer up in the front. I love you, Maddie. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, before we leave, I have a couple quick announcements, but before we do that, I want you guys to just take one second. I'm going to give you like 15 seconds, and I want you to just ask the Lord right now in your prayer, Jesus, what's one word for me to remember what you did tonight? Okay? Just close your eyes if you got to. Jesus, what's one word? And when you got it, sometimes I take myself too seriously, so we're going to do something a little bit silly, okay? Humor me. I want you to, like, grab it from the air and, like, put it in your pocket. Go. Do it. Grab it. Put it in your pocket. That's your word, okay? Because here's the thing. Jesus wants to encounter us, and he wants to change us, and he wants to do something with what he's given you. And it's so easy for things to go, like, in one ear and out the other. But the Lord wants to build upon your life. Amen. Amen. Guys, I love Ikea. Give it up for Ikea. I think I have gone to Ikea like four times since we've been back in school, which is like way too much. But today I went to Ikea with my housemate and she like bought this dresser and she was so excited for this dresser um, that she was like, Lauren, I am going to stay up really late tonight putting this dresser together. And I was like, dude, what? (laughs) Like, I'm going to bed. You can do that. But... She wants to put it together because she's excited for, like, this building project. And I don't know if you've ever bought anything from Ikea, but it's, like, hard. And the instructions are in, like, ten different languages, and you're just like, I don't don't know what I'm doing. Um, But the good news is that the Lord wants to build something out of your life. And he doesn't just give you instructions and, like, ask you to do it on your own. He's like, actually, let me into your room. Show me the instructions. Show me, like, the vision that you have for this, and let's do it together. Amen? So I want you to take that little word you put in your pocket, and I want to challenge you to build it, like, tonight. Like, start now, because it's worth it, and Jesus wants to do it. Amen? Okay, I got a couple quick hitters for you guys tonight. We got some announcements of cool events that are coming up. As, first of all, 
safety. As we're leaving tonight, please use all three of the doors so we can stay spaced. Um, directly after this, you have two options of fun things you can do, or you can like go to bed or hang out with your friends. That's cool too. Um, first thing, we have prayer teams. If you've never been to prayer teams before, basically it's just people, just students, who want to pray with you about what the Lord did in your heart tonight. So if like the Lord started something and you're like, I don't know what's going on, but I like want a little bit of help, or I just want to give God glory for what he's doing and just ask for more, the Lord has more for you and he wants to, to, to build on that. So prayer teams are going to be over in Christ the King Chapel, and when you get there, they'll tell you like where to sit and what to do. Um, but it's super cool, NBD, but a big deal. Um, <laughs> if, if you don't want to do that, there's karaoke outside, which is also super cool, NBD, no big deal. Um, some events coming up. Our, the, this is a FOP. We do it every month. Um, and the next FOP is October 3rd. So put that in your calendar. We want to see you back here. We are also starting Tuesday night praise and worship, which is really cool. Give it up for Tuesday night. Guys, if you want to continually like breathe the life of the Holy Spirit, go to Tuesday night. Go. Um, it's going to be at 9 o'clock in Christ the King Chapel on Tuesday. Everyone say Tuesday. Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. Um, last thing I think is that let me hear you if you are one of my ladies in the room. Oh, 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 oh. That was weak. Let me hear you, ladies. There we go. For the ladies, guys, you're awesome. We will have stuff for you. But for the ladies, this week on Thursday, we are going to be having a women's ministry party for you. Um, so it'll be up in the piazza, and we're going to play some fun games, have some fun music, and introduce you to the women's ministry core team. Give it up for the core team. The core team are super awesome. And if the Lord puts something on your heart tonight, and you're like, I would love to, like, walk with somebody in that, and I, like, need community, and I want connection with other women who are walking this journey, who are building this thing with the Lord, um, that's the place to be. So get, get connected. That's 8 to 10 on Thursday. Y'all say Thursday. Okay. You are amazing. If there's no more announcements. Karaoke is actually in here, so don't go anywhere if you want to do karaoke. Okay? Okay. Um, JP is going to take us away with one last song. Have a good night, guys. Hey. Actually, one quick more announcement, actually, too, um, before we play that last song is from music ministry standpoint, um, I just wanted to say, like, let's hear it for these wonderful musicians who came out. This is... We got Joe, Lizzie, Holly, Brian, Dan, and Keith here tonight. Um, but if you want to do music ministry, we've had so many auditions for, like, the masses, um, for the music groups in the chapel this past week, but we have two more days we're opening up for auditions because we've had so much interest, but we still have time slots. So if you want to be on uh, music ministry here at Franciscan University, please sign in at the chapel office. Just go inside. There's a table. There's some forms. Please sign up for an audition time. And secondly, um, if you are interested in learning how to play guitar better or bass or drums or electric guitar or piano, we're going to be hosting workshops this semester. So um, starting tomorrow, go to Christ the King and put your name, phone, and email address so you can stay um, up to date as to when those are happening so we can contact you directly uh, in case that's something that you want to grow in for all the musicians out there. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll leave you with a song. Be, be sure to exit through all three exits, the back and then the two on the sides, uh, just to keep everyone distance. Thanks. Oh, and please sign up for the port. Uh, it will make Father Roberson very happy over here. Let's hear it for Father Roberson. Here we go.
so much for coming out tonight. God bless you guys.